Yakitori, aka Japanese chicken skewers, will change the way that you think about meat on a stick. Some cooks in Japan spend years mastering just chicken skewers, just yakitori. From beak to feet, these dudes can make like 30 plus skewers, it's, it's insane. And here I am thinking like a 10, 12 piece chicken breakdown is like stretching it. So to do real deal yakitori, you need a special grill, special charcoals called binchitan, and special skills. But if you don't have a Japanese grill, binchitan, or like a life's worth of experience breaking down chicken and making skewers, that's okay. Okay too. Today we're going to go over how to take a standard charcoal grill and make it sort of act like a Japanese one. Then I'll show you how to position the charcoals for maximum grilling efficiency. And of course then we're going to make the chicken skewers themselves. Okay, let's do it. Our story begins indoors putting our skewers and sauce together. These are scallions, otherwise called green onions. You got the root ends, the leaves in the middle part. We're kind of going for Maybe you can get see what these bigger, chunkier boys right here. We can maybe get two from here. So that's what that's what I'll try to do. So you heard that weird dude. We're going to use the middle portion of our scallions for our skewers. Cut off the root ends and green leafy parts and reserve them. Don't toss these. We're going to use a few later to bolster our sauce. Save the rest for like stock or garnish. And I've chosen to use chicken thighs for these skewers. Now I'm no yakitori master, so I'm not gonna break down a chicken and make like 300 pieces with it. We're just gonna use some good old thighs. It is a good mixture of uh, great chicken flavor and still retain some of that fat. Clean up the thighs by cutting away any of the fatty dingleberry-esque hanging portions if you'd like. This is optional, but it makes it look a lot nicer. Then cut across the thighs to create small strips. I cut the thighs like this because it allows flexibility when skewering, if that's a word. You can feed the stick through the center or fold the piece of chicken over to make it a little chunkier. It's an aesthetic thing, so really it's your call at the end of the day. I've soaked some bamboo skewers in water for about 20 minutes. Like, in theory, this helps the skewer to keep from burning, but today we're working with an especially high grill, so it probably won't even matter. Still, I thought this was a tip worth sharing. Next, build the skewers alternating between chicken and onion. I like to keep the food towards the front half of the stick so it's easier to work with on the grill. In Japan, they like to cook yakitori on rectangular compact grills. The small rectangular surface allows for control, finesse, and delicacy when grilling, which is slightly different than we're used to here in the US. Since the heat of our charcoal won't be as controlled as it would be on a Japanese grill, I like to wrap the wooden skewers with tin foil to keep them from burning to a crisp. If you have metal skewers, feel free to use those and just forget everything I said. Next, we'll make the sauce known as tare, also called teriyaki. Mix equal parts shoyu, which is Japanese soy sauce, then mirin, which is a Japanese cooking wine condiment, chicken stock, and brown sugar. Then toss in a few of those scallion scraps and garlic cloves. Just some of the same scraps. These are just the tops. These are super flavorful, so... And then just three cloves of garlic. Bring all that up on medium heat and stir the brown sugar off the bottom of the saucepan. We want this to reduce down to a thick glaze. This should take somewhere between 15 and 20 minutes, but time will vary. Make sure not to boil this too hard or it could bubble over. Once reduced down, fish out the aromatics and toss them. You could get creative and use these to make something, I'm sure, but that's another video. When it's still hot, the sauce will be thin like this, but don't worry, it'll thicken as it cools. Oh, I can see myself in the spoon. Chill the sauce down in an ice bath or just set it aside and wait for it to cool down. We are going for a maple syrup-like consistency here. A little tip for you, I like to divide the tare sauce into two containers, one for basting and the other for later use. You'll be basting raw chicken, so no double dipping here. It's time to set up our grill. As mentioned, yakitori is generally cooked on a compact rectangular grill. The grill allows the skewers to hang over, preventing burnt skewers and concentrating the heat. I don't own a grill like that, so I've invented a rig that I found to be ideal for grilling yakitori on a standard charcoal grill. I use metal bag clips to create divots for two steel pipes to lay on. The clips secure the pipe so that I can lay a metal rack over the top. I know, to some of you this seems pointless, but hear me out. It's important that we keep the coals piled up near the skewers as much as possible for quick cooking, which is a mark for good yakitori. Setting the grill up like this allows me to play with the coals a lot easier than a traditional closed off grilling grate. And the finer mesh also ensures that nothing falls through the slits. And I mean, come on, that looks pretty cool too. Also, the charcoals used to grill traditional yakitori are special. The coals are called binjitan and it's known for its ability to absorb impurities and its clean burn which produces very little smoke. It also burns at an incredibly high heat for a very long time. Binjitan is awesome, but it's expensive and not easy to come by. Natural hardwood lump, my favorite charcoal, is our next best option. Hardwood lump charcoal burns hotter and cleaner than standard processed briquettes. Use a chimney to start a load of coals, dump them out when they're ready, then sprinkle on some more fresh coals. And if you don't know how to start a charcoal grill, I did a video all about that, so peep that if you you're interested. Use your tongs to push the coals into a line, then rest the grill grate on top so that they line up together, sort of. Let the coals burn up a bit before you start grilling. We want the grill to be as hot as possible to mimic the binchitin. 
Skewers at the ready, season with a bit of salt, but not too much. Our tare glaze is going to be responsible for much of the seasoning and flavor on the skewers. Lay the yakitori on the grate one at a time. Don't overcrowd the grill, make sure each skewer is getting enough love from the heat. After 30 seconds or so, turn the skewers over. At a yakitori restaurant, you'll notice that the cooks are constantly turning the skewers, which allows them to develop a crust without disintegrating, keeps them juicy, and chars them perfectly. Same sort of idea here. I like to turn the skewers a couple times before I hit them with the tare glaze. The sugars in the glaze will almost immediately start to caramelize from the grill's intense heat. Oh, and you'll notice that I'm wearing gloves. The grill should be that hot. Like, hot enough to elicit wearing gloves if you need to. No, no shame in the game, guys. After 30 to 45 seconds, flip the skewers and paint some sauce on the other side. Repeat the step two to three times for a total of, I don't know, like two to four minutes or until the chicken is cooked through fully. Making yakitori like this is a great thing to do in bulk and a great way to serve and feed a crowd. It's easy to eat, inexpensive to make, and tastes good with just about any side. Why don't you, uh, why don't you wipe yourself up there, bud? So I hope this video allows you to kind of think outside the box, maybe inspires you to try something new on the grill this summer, or at least maybe hopefully you found it entertaining for some reason. I gotta keep it real. When I traveled to Japan a few years ago, yakitori was probably one of the foods I was least excited to try. I mean, I thought chicken skewers, you know, you can get that anywhere. Boy, was I wrong. One of my favorite memories was sitting in a small izikaya, which is just like a micro bar uh, in Tokyo. We must have slammed like 50 different skewers and yeah, the Asahi was flowing heavy that night. Good times, good times. And if you did dig the vid, dig, dig the vid, dig, dig the vid, if you did dig the vid, please like it for me, and if you're new here, sub to the chan. And if you're already subbed, just understand that I'll cherish our relationship forever. We'll see you next week.